I love collaboration boots, especially when they're between one of the great Pacific Northwest brands and one of my favorite brands of boots. If you want to know how you take a comfortable last and build it on a perfect chassis, stick around. I'll tell you all the things I like about this boot and the one thing that I don't. How you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajit people. This is the Nix and Parkhurst collaboration boot called the V1. Nix announced it as the first ever collaboration between two boot companies. There's a lot I like about it, but when I summarize my review at the end of this video with pros and cons, I'll tell you about the one thing that I don't like about it. So this is the Nix Parkhurst V1. Nix made this taking their classic Falcon boot and its usual uh, full leather stitch down construction and built it around Parkhurst's iconic 602 last to create a sleeker and dressier profile. Looking at it, it isn't actually that different from their classic configuration Falcon, except that the toe box profile and uh, more pronounced arm and toe shape is sleeker. It's perhaps more of a service boot design than a work boot design. Uh, plain toe, slightly over six inch high shaft, uh, big leather pull loop, flat block heel, bright brass eyelets and speed hooks. And constructed with Nick's usual stitch down construction. I'll explain all that when I get into construction. They came with super long leather laces, but I found the twisted uh, brown and light tan look of the laces I found them a little too distracting, so I swapped them for these uh, White's MP flat wax cotton laces. I see no point in having a dressier lasted boot and be distracted by thick two-tone leather laces, even though I ordinarily like leather laces in the right boots. You can see uh, what they look like with the stock laces in this picture, and you'll probably see the bright white stitching on the stitch down construction as well. Uh, I brushed them with some brown boot cream to tone down the contrast for the same reason as swapping over the laces. A, a little too stark and distracting. You can catch them uh, in all their out of the box glory in this unboxing video up here. I'm still working out what outfits they best go with, but I think at the end of the day, it's going to end up being jeans mainly, whether in denim, uh, black or earth tones like brown. Classic khaki chinos will also probably work, and that's probably as dressy as, as they'll go. Uh, one thing I have found in the last couple of weeks wearing this around, the very big pull loops get in the way of my slimmer jeans and uh, even some of my straight leg jeans. I tend to tailor my jeans and pants to break just on my instep. This means that even with uh, looser fitting pants, when I sit down and, and sort of crook my legs, the pants hem uh, rises to just above the top of the shaft and catches the pull loops. <laughs> I've been shaking my pants down a lot uh, this last couple of weeks. Now let's talk about the brands. Parkhurst was founded in 2018 as a small batch direct-to-consumer company by Andrew Savisco, a former stock analyst who was motivated to make a quality boot for around a $300 to $400 mark and in doing so try to keep industry localized. Parkhurst's most iconic last is the 602 last, named after the landing ship tank that Andrew's grandfather served on in the Second World War. Building uh, his foundational plain toe Allen boots and cap toe Richmond boots on them, he's created some innovative makeups with uh, really different leathers like Kudu, Mohawk and Moose, as well as trying out different oil or combination tan leathers from tanneries like Seidel uh, instead of the ubiquitous uh, Hohen Chrome XL. The 602 last is applauded by Parkhurst fans. Uh, a last is the 3D shaped mold around which a particular boot is built. The design uh, ends up taking on the shape of the last. Andrew designed the 602 last himself, uh, when often the bootmakers will go to last designers and they'll license a the shape to use as theirs. It's a combination last in that it's molded with a narrow heel and waist, uh, starting I believe with a B or C width heel and then widening out to an E width uh, forefoot, combined with a rounded almond shaped toe. 
This means that it grips your, your heel but offers comfort around the ball of your feet and does not squeeze your toes uh, while still looking dressy, sleek and sharp. This is the last that Nyx took uh, as the collaborative piece. Nyx lasts tend to be high arched and with a more consistent width up and down the foot, mostly with a rounded and higher profile toe box. You can see why being grounded on work, uh, logging and firefighting boots that their lasts uh, offer comfort in the field and for standing up all day. Nyx with no apostrophe, <laughs> and more correctly Nyx handmade boots, was started by Russian immigrant Nick Blahuchin, I hope I got that right, in 1964. He eventually sold the company to co-worker Gary Myers in 1980 before retiring. Uh, in 1991, the company was sold again to Nick Petrilli, who in turn sold it in 1999 to Dick Hosley, and then in 2013 it was sold again to current owner Steve Moe. This is how interrelated the Pacific Northwest boot companies are. The original Nick uh, worked for White's Boots before he started Nick's. Nick Petrilli's brother, Frank, who also worked at Nick's, left to start Frank's Boots in 2016. John Cadzi, who worked for Nick's in the late 90s for a few years, also left and started JK Boots. <laughs> it's interesting to me how the Pacific Northwest is so well known for work and heritage boot making, but so many of its best known companies have totally interrelated roots and they're all within a relatively small geographical footprint. Nix is primarily a work boot manufacturer specializing in outdoor work boots for uh, builders and trades and people who work in the logging industry, linemen and so on. American bush firefighters are regular customers as well. They entered the heritage service boot type world in the 2010s with their Robert boot. Uh, take a look at my review up there. They now offer what is, a, uh, what is potentially a confusing array of articles and models, but basically classify them as work boots, heritage boots, and fire duty boots. The Falcon and a few other service boot styles are in the heritage section. As for the construction of this boot, my information is a little scant and I'm gathering bits and pieces from Nick's own uh, very informative and entertaining YouTube channels, as well as a little bit from what Andrew Savisco told me. Let's see what we can gather and I'll start with the construction method, which is the stitch down construction method. Uh, to see the different types of construction methods, take a look at this video up there uh, where I explain the main methods. Basically, the leather pieces making up the uppers are stitched together and then lasted. Uh, that is, they're pulled down tightly over the last. And the front of the uppers are then flared out in readiness to stitch to the midsole. Uh, inside, the insole is assembled and stitched on. Then the flared out uppers are stitched down uh, onto the leather midsole uh, to the outsole. As you can see, it's a double row stitch down and both stitches go through the uppers, midsole as well as the outsole. The midsole is a solid 5mm thick of really thick veg tan leather. I don't know how thick the insole is but it's not flimsy and the rubber outsole is about itself 8mm thick. So this is a solid raft that this boot sits on. Uh, the outside, by the way, is uh, the outsole it is uh, Vibram 700 rubber outsole or commonly known as the V-bar sole due to the V-shaped pattern on it. It is low profile, so it befits a casual dress boot, but it is reasonably grippy on everything except the wettest and slickest stuff. The back half of the boot is glued, sewn and nailed to the insole construction. The heel block is made up of stacked leather pieces and topped by a Vibram Quarborg heel. This boot is full of names that are hard to pronounce. Uh, as it's built in the Nyx way, I think the inside of the boot under the arch is built up with shaped leather pieces and a leather shank to build up the arch, similar to Nyx's usual H&W moderate arch support. You can feel the level of the arch inside at about halfway up the inside arch area and there is a slight bulge under the arch for all that uh, leather support. It feels superb and I'll ex expand on that when I talk about fit and comfort. Moving on up, I chose brown chrome excel for the uppers because it was a quick ship option and I didn't have to wait. Although even then, quick ship meant a wait from May to August. Did I tell you that Nick's business model is built to order, right? A, a quick ship wait time of three months is pretty good in that context. Uh, others who opted for other less quickly available stock leathers, they're still waiting. 
Chrome Excel, as you probably know, is tanned by Hohwein Tannery, uh, a tannery that started in 1905, uh, inventing the famous combination tan Chrome Excel in 1911. It is a pull-up leather and used by almost every quality bootmaker out there. Used here, <laughs> it's hard to show you the pull-up because my thumbs are a bit sore and this cut of Chrome Excel used is so damn thick, it's about three millimeters thick. The structured toe puff is celastic, but the external heel counter is veg tan leather and it's tough. There is a two-piece backstay protecting the heel counter with the uh, central piece moving up and protecting the Achilles tendon and attached to that is the beefy pull loop. The stitching on the uppers isn't going anywhere. It's uh, triple stitched uh, in the bottom backstay, uh, multiple chevron stitched in the Achilles backstay and quadruple stitched at the quarters. For as big as the hand-stitched stitch-down stitches are, the stitching on the uppers are small, consistent and very clean. The hardware is bright brass, uh, four eyelets, three-speed hooks and a top eyelet. They are evenly spaced and feel very solid in the brass material uh, and also in the way that they're fixed. The tongue is a fully gusseted tongue. I think it might be made of chrome Excel as well, but it is a much thinner hide, uh, one and a half to two millimeters, and so it's very malleable. That's great, because you need to fold it over itself, I use this S shape, uh, since it's fully gusted. The boots come with chrome Excel kilties, false tongues, to protect the softer real tongue from being uh, scratched by the hardware, uh, and to keep dirt off the folds of the real tongue. The top of the shaft is reinforced by a piece of chrome Excel uh, that's very nicely rolled for comfort and I guess looks as well. It's a beautifully constructed boot, all sturdy and solid. So solid in fact that with all that leather it weighs in at a hefty uh, 1.1 kilos per boot. It's very heavy and I'm having problem holding it. But that's not what I dislike about it. In fact, the heft just feels right. You feel protected when you put the boots on and it feels like Oh, you know, you're wearing something substantial and important. As for leather care, it is Chrome Excel, so as usual, number one, uh, keep it clean of dust, dirt and gritty things which are the enemy of leather. Two, condition it now and then with a conditioner of your choice. Uh, the boots come with a small container of boot grease, which I've been told is actually Obanoffs. Some people may not like uh, putting Obanoffs on Chrome Excel because it will darken the leather. I can see why you would use, uh, use Obanoffs though. Uh, if you use this as a work boot, the Obanoffs grease would help the moderately water resistant boot become a much more water resistant boot. If you have to wash the boot if it gets dirty and then it dries out, I prefer conditioning it with some Neats Foot oil which doesn't darken the leather. But if it really isn't dried out and all you're doing is some regular conditioning, I recommend Venetian shoe cream in neutral. Just a thin smear. Uh, let it haze and absorb, and then brush it off with a good quality horsehair brush. Venetian will also give it a soft polish. Now, let's take a look at sizing and how the fit of this collab boot feels as against a standard Parkhurst 602 boot. When I first bought my first NYX, I took a stab and chose my usual size in Heritage Boots, 8D, which is a half size down from my Brannock size of 8.5D. Now that fit well, so I did the same sizing uh, here. It's a good fit. Uh, there was hardly any break-in. In fact, on the second day, I went for a six kilometer walk with no bad effects whatsoever. Uh, the heel and waist lock in. The arch support is great. The ball of the foot is snug like a firm handshake, and there's enough room uh, for my toes to wiggle, but not so much that I have to find grip when I'm walking. When these arrived and I put them on my Instagram account, uh, Andrew Savisco messaged me and asked how they fit. I told him what I still feel now. The fit is good, but a tiny bit more generous than in one of his boots. The arch support is much more apparent, of course, um, P&W construction. And the length visually looks longer, but I don't think it is. I understand that as all that leather under my arch settles down with my weight on them, my foot will gradually slip down the slope and fill out the toe box more. Right now, there's a little more than a thumb's width in the front of my toes, so I expect that will settle in. There is no sense of being loose about it. The sturdy feel of the build, um, the arch, 
The firmness of the uppers all combine to keep you reminded you have a pair of boots on your feet and that they are sturdy and real boots and important. I can't describe that feeling any better. Now these boots cost 599 US dollars when I ordered back in May uh, 2023. That's a lot of money in Australia, especially the postage cost, wait for it, 123 US dollars. Ah, oh, that total Australian 1,134 dollars. Even I have to admit that was a lot, but 599 US, about 940 dollars for the boots, has to be separated from the highway robbery that is 123 or Aussie 200 dollars for postage. Come on USPS. At 599 US, these are incredibly well built. Vibok service boots are 700 US, White's MPs are 600, so it's all in the ballpark. Would you pay that much? Depends on what you get, I think. To me, these come well made and feeling important. <laughs> so yeah, value seems to match price. So even the cost isn't what I don't like about this. So what is it? that I don't like about these boots. On the pro side, I put firmly the fit and comfort. Definitely the sturdiness of materials and construction. Uh, the arch support is worth a mention. The look and aesthetics of a casual dress service boot that feels like a work boot is well up there as well. And the feeling when you put these on, the feeling that I have something important on my feet. <laughs> on the con side, one and only one thing I really dislike about these boots. They're called the NYX Cross Parkhurst V1 for a reason. There's going to be a V2. That means I'll have to buy the V2 when it comes out. Oh God, I hate that. But hey, you probably love it because that means if you like and subscribe, I'll have to do another unboxing and another review of the V2. So go on, click on like and make sure you're subscribed. Until then, take care and I'll see you again soon.